Greetings everyone and welcome back to Inside EVs. Behind me today is the Mercedes EQA, which is the fully electric version of the GLA. I'm going to show you around the vehicle, explain what Mercedes did to uh, change the GLA in order to create the EQA, and then I'm going to drive it and tell you a little bit more about the EV side of things. So from the front you will immediately spot that the grille is completely closed off. It's just a black grille, but my tester has the AMG pack, so it gets these two bright chrome strips like other AMG models. The EQA also has this light bar that connects the headlights. And if you can see, the light bar uh, continues with the daytime running lights in the headlights. The headlights themselves are uh, multi-beam LEDs and they're very good. And they have this blue detail here that sets them apart from uh, the GLA's headlights. My tester, as I was saying, has the AMG pack. So the bumper is uh, sportier and a bit different. I think it looks better than the standard bumper. These vents are real, they channel air somewhere. This little thing here is where the front facing camera for the 360 degree view system should have been, but this car doesn't have it. Moving to the side, this car gets AMG wheels that are unique because they have like this uh, arrow lip here that's supposed to smoothen the airflow. Then there are also these EQA badges here just below the A-pillar. Frankly, I don't really like these. They just seem tacked on or stuck on and like a bit of an afterthought. Blacked out mirror caps for the AMG model. Oh, and the EQA gets this strip here that the GLA doesn't, which on normal models is chrome, but on this uh, AMG pack tester, it's uh, satin black, or glossy black rather, as is the trim around the windows. Although you still get chrome on the door handles. I would have made that black too, honestly. Moving to the rear, it really does look like a GLA until you see the light bar. This is its biggest distinguishing feature, visually, from the exterior, I mean. So the light bar extends all the way around the rear of the vehicle, and it gives it quite a distinctive look. This is the EQA 250, the base model, the base EQA, the front-wheel drive car. Oh yeah, and because Mercedes um, put the light bar here, it had to relocate the badge, which is also now the trunk release. And speaking of the trunk, we have to start talking about the compromises that Mercedes has made in order to create the EQA based on the GLA. So for instance, the trunk is uh, not very big. It's like 300 or so liters, but the GLA's trunk is like 500 liters. I will put what that is in um, cubic feet on screen. The place where you lose the most capacity is under the floor where you now get nothing. That's because this is where Mercedes put the battery in the EQA. But it's still a practical place, you know. You have tethering points here and like some elastic straps. So it's fairly practical. And the compromises continue in the rear seat. Now, because the battery is under the floor, especially in the rear part of the vehicle, they've had to raise the floor. So when you sit in the back, your knees are a bit higher than you expect. You can compare this to a GLA by looking at the transmission tunnel, which now serves no purpose in this car because no exhaust or prop shaft goes through there but you can compare it to the GLA and you will notice that on the GLA it looks taller, but it's not taller. The floor around it is lower. And this uh, makes it ever so slightly more uncomfortable to travel in the back of the EQA compared to the GLA. Although to be fair, knee room is great, 
headroom is plentiful. You get an armrest, which is nice and soft, and you get some cup holders, which are kind of strange. I'm not sure I like them. I'll show you how they work. So this part uh, goes out, and then you have to hold this down somehow. I'm assuming you just put your drink on it and it goes all the way down. It's kind of a silly solution and overly complicated. There aren't many creature comforts to speak of in the back. You just get a single USB-C and two vents, electric windows, and yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll move to the front now, show you around the cockpit, and then I'll take the car for a drive. The EQA's cockpit is almost indistinguishable from the GLA's. In fact, if you opt for the AMG pack, it's completely indistinguishable. In the non-AMG uh, EQA, you get blue contrasting stitching around the cabin, as well as EQA branded uh, mats. The only way to tell it apart when you're aboard is to look at the dials, the digital dials displayed on this 10-inch uh, screen, because they are different to the GLAs. You don't have a tachometer, obviously, and it's just EV-specific. Oh, and uh, there's the EQ menu in uh, the MBUX. Okay, let's take it for a drive. So this EQA 250, which is the base model, has a front-mounted 190 horsepower electric motor. That's good enough to send it to 100 kilometers per hour from standstill in a quite leisurely 8.9 seconds. It is nowhere near as quick as some other electric crossovers. Although Mercedes has now introduced two additional versions, the EQA 300 and the EQA 350, both of which have a dual motor setup and all-wheel drive. The more powerful EQA 350 makes 290 horsepower and it can sprint to 100 kilometers per hour much quicker in just six seconds. All versions get the same 66.5 kilowatt hour battery pack and for this particular variant, the 250, the stated WLTP range is 426 kilometers. But as we've come to expect from these uh, standardized lab tests, they are by no means accurate and uh, you shouldn't expect to achieve the stated range in real-world driving conditions. When I picked the car up from Mercedes with around 98% in the battery, it showed me a range of 358 kilometers, which is pretty decent. Now I'm uh, just below the halfway point when it comes to state of charge, and it's showing me 153 kilometers, although I kept it in sport mode and I didn't drive it efficiently in any way. I just tried to enjoy the vehicle. Sadly, I didn't have time to perform a range test because I only had the car for a few days. But I think that around 200 miles is what you should expect to get out of it. The maximum charging capacity of the EQA is 100 kilowatts, and this should bring the battery from 10 to 80% in well under an hour or if you rely on its maximum onboard charging capacity, you're looking at 11 kilowatts and around five to six hours for a full charge. If you just connect it to a regular European household socket, you're probably going to have to leave it uh, overnight. The interior feels great. You feel actually quite special, even though this is the smallest uh, crossover from Mercedes. The materials, are mostly top-notch with a few exceptions but they're all lower down in the cabin and you won't really notice them. I also like this open pour wood trim that's on the um, on the dash and on the door panels. The AMG pack adds nice sport seats which are manually adjustable it has to be said and uh, the Alcantara that's on the center of the seats you can also find on the door panels around the, the open pour wood that I mentioned. The seating position even with the seat in its lowest position is quite high, a bit too high if you ask me. I just stepped out of the Volkswagen ID4 and into this vehicle and in that the driving position is so much better and sportier than this. 
even though the seat itself is not quite as good. The ride is also especially comfortable for a vehicle of this size. It has independent suspension all around and it really works well over bumps. The only slight gripe I have with it is the fact that um, when you do hit a bigger pothole, even if the car isn't really that unsettled, you do hear the suspension clonking away. It's not very damped and I noticed this in uh, more expensive Mercedes models as well. So it's not just a problem for the vehicles based on its front wheel drive platform like the A-Class, the CLA, the GLA, the GLB and also the EQA and the EQB. One big compromise that this vehicle has because it's an ICE vehicle that's been uh, repurposed as an EV is the extra weight. This vehicle weighs almost two tons and that's around 500 kilos heavier than a comparable front-wheel drive GLA and that's a lot. And while just cruising around you won't notice this, um, when you chuck it into a corner it uh, starts to go all wobbly and it's not very reassuring. And this, I think, sets the theme for the conclusion I'm going to draw about this car. It feels like a compromise. It's just an electric GLA, it's not its own model, even though it has its own name and it's part of Mercedes' new line of EQ electric models. It feels like a compliance vehicle. And even though the Mercedes-ness of it is present, it's definitely a Mercedes sitting here. There's no question about it. But it feels like more of a compromise than both um, electric models from Mercedes that I've driven, the EQC and the EQV. And the EQC I actually found uh, very, very pleasant. I thoroughly enjoyed my time with it. And I really can't say the same about the EQA. Yes, I know the EQC is twice the price of this, which in Europe starts at just under 50,000 euros, VAT included. This is definitely not a car to please an enthusiast with front-wheel drive and the wobbly handling through the corners. Is it a bad car? Certainly not. It has plenty of qualities that do recommend it as a decent EV, although it cannot compare with models that were purposely uh, designed to be electric from the start. Like the ID4 that I drove before this vehicle. That is a much better, more well-rounded vehicle with fewer, if any, compromises. I'm not really sure I can recommend the EQA. Sure, you should totally consider it if what you really, really want is a small electric Mercedes crossover. But if you just want an electric crossover, then the one from Mercedes shouldn't be your top pick. You should do several test drives of competing models before buying this, just to make sure you really, really want it, and you will undoubtedly see that those cars are more talented. That's pretty much it for the EQA. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching until the end. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please do so, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.